Welcome back. My name is Ray Cornelia. This is my first video of 2015. I hope that everyone's forging ahead in the new year. Um, in today's video, we're going to do a little uh, lathe head tramming. I was using a parting blade in a piece of stainless. Uh, it was a Chinese parting blade. It's all I had at the time. And I pushed a little too hard and it shattered. Um, wasn't as bad as a crash. I don't want to really call it a crash, but it did, it did catch the material and shatter the blade. And it, it made a pretty significant sound. So I was concerned about the uh, accuracy of the spindle. So I put a test bar in there, made a couple passes, and sure enough, it was a 3,000 taper in a four inch span. So um, I'm gonna just go over repairing that. I know several people have done videos on this. Uh, Tom Lipton did an excellent one on tramming the head on his lathe. Uh, Colin over at Comp Edge X, he did one. Uh, so basically more of the story here, if something happens that puts a strain on your machine, I would check the tram every time. And you should check it periodically anyway. Uh, if you want accurate parts, you need to be making accurate cuts and tramming is a real important part um, of getting good, good uh, results. Anyway, let me move the camera over there and um, I'll explain to you where I've gotten so far. Okay, over here at the Grizzly. Um, first step, um, basically I got a piece of uh, one and a half inch 12L14. Um, I got it chucked up in the three jaw chuck and I got about a little over four and a quarter inch uh, stick out here. Uh, four inches, 300 thou. Um, and this is my test bar. Um, you can make it out of any piece of scrap material. Um, the larger the, in diameter, the better. It's going to be more rigid. So I started out by putting this in here and I, I, I kept making skim cuts until I got um, a good cut all the way across and all the way around the bar. So then came in with a micrometer and measured from one end to the other and that's how I discovered I had my 3 thou taper. Um, since, since the uh, parting blade, well I was parting back here, but since the parting blade bound up here and pretty much exploded, it, it pushed the spindle, or I should say the head, away from the cutting tool. So my size at the end here was bigger than the size closer to the chuck. So basically what we have to do now is tram this and bring this end back closer to the cutting tool until we get zero reading on both. Now I'm using this barbell method or whatever it's called and basically all you do is take out some material. Leave two pads exposed um, and I just removed about 40 thou in between. That way um, when you make your cut here you're not, you're not having to put strain on this bar by cutting all the way across and it cuts down the time a lot. That way you don't have to cut across every single time. Here you make your cut, take it, take it out of the feed, jam over to here, make this cut. So the next step is I got to pull the side cover off um, and, I'll, and I'll show you how we make these adjustments. Um, I'm going to have to take the camera out of the stand. Um, so I'll try to keep it as steady as possible because I cannot, I cannot show you where these adjustment bolts are uh, with it on the stand. So let me get set up for that. Okay, we're going to remove the side cover to gain access to the adjustment bolts or screws, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> okay, this is the part where I take you off the stand and, and bring you in. Uh, I might need to get a flashlight too. So, let me cut to that. Okay, I'm going to try to do this on the stand. 
Uh, this is the gear side, side cover that we just took off. The head is attached by uh, four screws, two in the back, and then I'll take you around the front and I'll show you that. Uh, these cinch the head down to the um, gearbox. And then here, you have an adjustment screw that pushes up against the gear case. And then there's one back in here too. Uh, let me try the flashlight method and see if that's gonna help. Uh, back in here, it's kind of whitewashing out I think. But there's an adjustment screw with a shoulder nut back there and there's one right here. Um, that's what. That's how you move the head either in or out away from the cutting tool or into the cutting tool. Um, so basically what we're going to have to do is loosen up the four holding the head to the gearbox, leave them a little snug, and then work with the adjustment screws. I'll take you around to the other side and show you the other two. Everyone else's lathe is going to be different, I'm sure, but, but on every lathe you should be able to tram the head. So let me uh, reposition the camera again. Okay, now I'm back over to the chuck side of the head. And here's the other two attachment bolts that attach the head to the gear case. There's one, and there's the other one right there. So we're gonna uh, loosen on these, like I said, leave them a little snug, and then we're gonna start adjusting until we get a zero reading on our test bar. I'm using 12L14 because it cuts real nice, it cuts easy, and it cuts very well with uh, high-speed steel. Uh, I'm just using a hand ground bit with a nice fresh hone on it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and so what we'll do is uh, we'll make a, a couple uh, skin cuts here and uh, we'll go from there, man. I'm running at about 755. Uh, I'm not sure what my feed rate is. I took the side cover off and that's where the, <laughs> the numbers are. So here we go. It's a nice slow feed rate. It's leaving a immaculate finish. And I'm only taking about two thousandths off. Okay. I'm taking her out of auto feed, bringing the carriage over, re-engaging the feed. Okay, I'm going to back off on the cutter, come back across. Alright, let me grab my mic and I'll be right back. Okay, now we take our measurement. And we transfer it over to a piece of paper, which I'll take you over there after I record this. Of course, that's the tailstock measurement. And then we're going to have our headstock measurement. Okay, then you record your findings. Um, I'm going to point something out here while I'm thinking about it. Um, I already had this head reading a half a tenth from the tailstock to the head. And what happened is um, I put the cover, the side cover on, and I cinched the uh, set screws down with pliers, and I should not have done that. And the reason I cinched it down with pliers is so I wouldn't pick up any chattering noise or whatever when I was machining. And... I screwed myself because by putting that cover on, it kicked it to two tenths, from a half a tenth back to two. So as you can see, I'm going back and forth. Um, I went all the way out four tenths difference. Um, so I'm back to two again. So let me take you back over the lathe and show you how I'm measuring it. Okay, I'm using a Noga on the compound and I'm using the tenth gauge that uh, Stan over bar Z uh, gifted to me. Um, 
I'll tell you what, Stan, this gauge is awesome, man. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot more use out of it than I thought I would. It's very, very touchy. I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever used the 10th gauge before, but I'll tell you what, you breathe on it, heat up your part, and you're out. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bringing the 10th gauge up on zero, and I'm moving that adjustment screw half the distance of what I'm trying to gain. So I'm trying to get out a, a two-tenths taper. So I need to, so I need to move it one-tenth. Now, I, I don't know if you saw that in the camera, but I had this set for zero, and we're sitting here talking for not even 30 seconds, and that sucker moved off of zero. So basically what I do is, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed uh, Stan, but he'll, he'll set his zero, and then, and then he'll unload his parts, basically tap on them, and get, get, re get everything to settle. So basically I'll, I'll set my zero, and I'll walk away from it for a little bit and see if it stays on zero. But as you can see, I, I could come off zero by just, look, I can lean on this thing and get, and get <laughs> a deflection. So basically what I'll do is I'll set this zero and then I'll go around to that rear adjusting a screw and I'll just put a little pressure on it uh, with these bolts snug not loose, snug, and not tight until I get my my one tenth, and then make another cut, rinse and repeat. So um, let me get uh, let me get the wrench and let's see if we can get that one tenth right now. All right, here we go. Okay, that's not good. It's going in the wrong direction now. I think I, I think I went beyond the fulcrum point. So uh, let me uh, let me reach back in and get to the other one, and we'll be right back. Okay, I got it to come back. I got my one tenth. Um, so basically, we're going to take down the indicator, make another skim cut, another measurement, and go back and forth until we have a zero reading on this pad and this pad. Then we're gonna cinch down the bolts, make it, uh, cinch down the bolts, torque them all the same, and make a skim cut and hope that we didn't change anything. Okay, let's dial in two thou and make a cut. Let's take a measurement. Okay, and record that. Measure the back, record that, rinse and repeat. That last cut brought us to a one-tenth taper. Um, of course, light on the tailstock side. You know what, guys? I'm going to call that good. I don't want to risk uh, knocking it back out again. Uh, it's just temperature's going to change anyway. Uh, I, th I think that's good. Um, I won't take you through the whole boring process. You kind of get the idea. Uh, basically back and forth, rinse and repeat. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cinch down and torque the four uh, mounting bolts, uh, make a skim cut and a measurement. Hopefully it won't change. Uh, it shouldn't because I have them pretty snug. Um, and anyway, check your tram, man. I just finished torquing the four mounting bolts and made a skim cut, measured it, and I retained that one-tenth taper. 
so I call that a success. Uh, when the temperature changes again and starts warming up around here again, I want to do this again because um, I am almost positive temperature is going to change that a little bit. So, hey, thanks for coming along. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, feel free to like, comment, shoot me any questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks again, guys. See you soon.